Hi, this is Louis D. Fresh coming to you on a Wednesday morning. Uh, just looking here, I wanted to start analyzing a little bit of uh, the plants that I have out here in the backyard. It's really important to realize where you live. For example, I live in South Florida, Southeast South Florida, and it's kind of important to start realizing and start noticing your yard. Number one, noticing where you live. All the United States has zones, zones one through 11. Hawaii being the hottest and Alaska, northern Alaska being the coldest. And so you need to start realizing how it is where you live and what zone you live in. I happen to live in a zone 10 and zone 10 is subtropical. And once you realize that, then you start to try to see what, what kind of plant should I plant. And this plant right here is called a hibiscus. This hibiscus right here grows well in zone 10. And once you've realized your zone and you realize what your backyard looks like, you need to start noticing the posi positioning of your sun. I know right now that tree is blocking the sun, but you can see the highlights around. It almost looks like a halo. That tells me that the sun rises in the east and it'll go all the way to the west. And right now we're just focusing on this plant right here, the hibiscus. And so I need to start realizing, okay, if it's rising in the east, my plant, how well will it do in morning sunlight? And as you can see, it has done very, very well. Now, part two, you may say, well, what else do I need to know? You need to know about how tall your plant is gonna grow. Look how tall this plant is. It is taller than me. I'm about 5'10", 5'11". This plant is definitely taller than me. I'm actually standing on something to, to keep make me a little taller. Now, in that same breath, that's why it is against a fence. And being against a fence, it can, it kind of deal with a little wind and rain because we in here in South Florida get some nasty storms. That's why it is on a fence because if you look a little closer, you see that the stems are kind of thin. You see, even, even here, that's a thick one, but still the stem is thin. So with that said, you start to need to realize, hey, I need to have something to support it. Even when I initially planted it, you'll notice I had little things here that are usually used for orchids, but I used it to help keep the plant straight as it started to grow. And I also used this thicker part of the, of the fence to kind of hold it because it kind of did flop around a little bit. So that is something you need to start to realize. And then once you've kind of realized that point, you just need to see where it is planted. And you notice I put an awful lot of soil around it, a lot of soil. It's almost, there's almost not like a little mound. But with that mound, it gives it more chance to, to kind of stabilize and become a stronger plant. And so that's what we have here. Realize where you live, in my case, zone 10. And so therefore, if I'm in zone 10, I'm not gonna plant something like a Siberian uh, iris, a hydrangea, a spinach, kale. Those are cold climate plants. I want something that's warm. And as I walk around and I start talking to you more about plants, I will show you that most, if not all my plants are tropical slash subtropical. I can deal with just a little bit of cold that I get here in South Florida. And realize what your positioning of your sun, realize where it is, how the plant grows in terms of its stems. Will it need a little help? Because if I plant that by itself, it's gonna tip over and it's gonna flop over. Put a little bit more soil in it. You see a little more soil, a little more, again, one more time, a little mound. You need that mound so it doesn't, so it can get a good grasp. And so that's all I got here on your Wednesday, September 30th. Have a fabulous day.